so that nobody will say he didn't understand my presentation. I want that land back and I am going to get it. Your Highness, with all due respect, I and every single elder here will advise you to forget that land. Let it go. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Why would you say a thing like that? I am surprised at all of you. You want me, Eze Babuchi Okeke the second of Omobo, to forget a land that originally belonged to my people and is said to contain a huge deposit of precious stones in the hands of that cultist, that murderer that parades himself as the king of Idu. It's not going to happen. Am I me? Your Highness, that man you referred to as a cultist exhibited some weird powers before your father. And to save our lives, we transferred ownership to him. Yes. Mm. Your Highness, you just came back from Ireland to assume position as a king. We are prepared to support you as our king. Mm -hmm. One thing you will do for us is to forget that king. Mm -hmm. He is evil. Mm. We would not want to have anything to do with him again. I don't want it to look as if I'm being obstinate here. No, I'm not stubborn. I'm that same Ibabuchi who believes in justice. That man used weird powers to coerce you and my father into signing off that land to him. He didn't pay a dime. I want it back and I must get it. Elders in council do not always like to go back on what they had crossed. Yes. Going after that land is like going after the deadliest king in this part of the world. Without the land and everything in it, you will still be our king. And our kingdom will still be great. Of course I will still be your king. A very foolish king at that. A king who sits in the comfort of his palace while some people pillage his land. A land that belonged to his people. And he does nothing about it. Listen to me. Ebokote Kwano must forfeit that land or he pays me in monetary terms the exact worth of that land. Do you know what Ibubu means in Ibu land? You dare not say no to a man who asks Ibubu. You dare not lock on or disagree with a man who asks Ibubu unless you are mentally inclined to commit suicide. You do not go to war with a man that asks Ibubu for the ill luck that will come your way will defy logical judgment. Ibubu, as we all know, it's an ancient, intimidating aura that accompanies great men, gods, goddesses, and potentates. And Eze, Ekukota Ekwono, himself, is that deity that has Ibubu. People do not argue with such person. Ekukota Ekwono was able to deal with my father. Because as a man who followed the new religion, he abandoned our traditional religion. But I, Ibabuchi, am no fool. And since I ascended the throne of my forefathers, I have been associating with Obuefi Amandianese, the one and only traditional priest of Omoblo Kingdom. I must tell you he has been a tremendous guide to me. My father never listened to him, but I have decided to change things. I believe he can be of help. Your Highness, Ekbokote Ekwonu has all it takes. He has nothing. Absolutely nothing. The deity you all believe he has is not actually a deity. It's a useless charm. A charm he prepared himself. He used his wife on that charm because the woman told him to stop delving deeper into demonic operations. And as we speak, he's trying to get a deaf and dumb woman as a wife. A woman who will not disturb him. And where did you get all this? Eze Bokote Kwano is going to crash. It's an assurance. I want all of you to come together. Let us reconnect with our chief priest. Our forefathers left certain powers for us to consolidate her. We have to come together and reconnect with our chief priest and seek the face of our chief. Your Highness, so you actually came back from Ireland to take us back. To paganism. Let us not be deceived, please. There is nothing like paganism in the practice of our ancient religion. Everything has fallen apart simply because we abandoned the tenets of this religion for something we do not know. Let us retrace our steps 
so that we can finally have an edge over Ibukote Kwanu and his ilk. He might claim to be the Alusi Nwelibobo of we do, but I will tell him that I am Ufuaka Lutamano Zuorono of Omobolo. I don't like this. I do not like this at all. And what do you expect me to do? Go back on my words? Babuchi, you have money. You have enough money to buy any comfort we need. Therefore, I think you do not need this land for crying out loud. Chemaka, I am surprised this is coming from you. Why would you say a thing like that? I need the land. It is our legacy. A legacy bequeathed to us by our forefathers. The land belongs to us. It was unjustly taken from my people by a man who used evil powers to scare them away. And I am out to get it back. I will perforate him. You are squaring up against an evil man who killed his own wife. And you think he can kill us too? <sighs> Chemaka, give me some credit. I am the mafia king of Omobolo. Ofweka Lutama no Zuorano. I will play this game with him and put him where he belongs. Sweetheart, what are you going to do? I ask, what are you going to do against a man who has a deadly deity in his own palace? I gathered that even law enforcement agents are scared of this man, so... Chamaka, I think the time has come for me to demystify that man. What that Froster has is just a charm. And in the epistemology of ancestral worship, Charm is unknown. I will get it back and nobody will die. What's the guarantee? Truth is the guarantee. That man is a personification of evil. He's evil in human form. We are justly fighting for our rights. And I tell you something, Chamaka. Evil can never triumph over good. What is it? When things like this begin to happen, I regret my father's early demise. If he were to be alive, all this wouldn't be happening. This, this demon, this devil's descendant, Eze Kukote Wano, wouldn't have taken the land that belongs to my family. Mother, I wanted to build a shopping complex on that land. Now that it's been taken away from us, what will I do? Son, you have to cheer up. Okay. A man who leaves stands to get another land. Okay, do not kill yourself because of this land. Okay? Cheer up. Mother, I am hurt. It's... <laughs> It is so painful that a man like me would take what rightfully belongs to me and I would do nothing. A man who forced himself on the people to be king. It's so painful that I am, I am helpless and hopeless. My son, nobody has ever challenged him. Those who did never lived to tell the story. Interpret it to mean that he has taken away all our sorrows. It's only God that knows why he allowed oh, this. mother. Why will God allow the mighty to trample on the minor? A man who has no son, why is he bent on taking all the lands he sets his eyes on? Why? What does he want to do with all the land? What? Don't worry, son. You see, he takes all the lands on site. When he dies, he will be buried in one of those lands. Nothing lasts forever, son. See, he killed others to take their lands. But he only took our own land. Cheer up. 
Tomorrow is better and brighter. Okay? Just cheer up, son. It's okay. So are we just going to keep quiet? Our sister died mysteriously in that man's house. We know it and everyone knows it. And we are going to sit here and do nothing about it. Amaka, you know who we are talking about here. How do you want us to confront him? He's a human being. He was married to our sister. We are his in-laws. We deserve an answer from him. The king of Idu has to tell us what happened to our sister. You want to fight him? You want to arrest him? How exactly do you intend getting a Ukotel Kwonu to do that? So, are we going to keep quiet about it? Do you know how I feel every day I walk down the road, people are staring at me? It's obvious. It's obvious to them that my sister died mysteriously in that man's hand and we have done nothing about it rather than to bury and mourn her. It's been one year. We have to do something about it. And we will, but not now. When, Uzokwe? It's been one year. Our sister's dead body was brought home to Ross. And we have done nothing about it rather than to mourn her. I have been calm enough. We have to do something about it. So, you want to go after the king? I am saying I want to question him. Because we deserve an explanation for that. Amaka, you keep forgetting who we are talking about here. If you go after Pukotel Kwon without enough ammunition, you will get burnt. He has screwed me. He married and killed my sister. What else can he do to me? You, 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 you. You keep forgetting she was equally my sister. I got burnt too, but then only a fool can get into battle unprepared, especially when you're fighting with someone like a Pukotel Kwono. Are you saying you go to the king and ask him to explain to you what happened to your sister? Are you equally saying I can't ask him for that explanation? What if he cuts off your tongue? What are you saying? He will cut off my tongue because I asked for an explanation? You will die. Leaving your, your husband, your children behind. The man you are talking of is a criminal that even the government and law enforcement agencies cannot do him anything. He is so arrogant that he can do anything, anytime, any day without considering the consequences. He killed my sister, and he has to answer for it. And what makes you feel you will not wipe out the beautiful family for disobeying him? Is that what we have become? A conquered people that keep quiet in the face of atrocity, even murdered. I do not say it's going to last forever. All I know, every day for the thief, but one day for the owner. Nothing lasts forever. The day of that king will come, and he will pay. At the stars at law, I am going to go straight to the point. I am going to possess, and I am going to possess fully. <clears throat> Your Highness, making a full purchase is not a good business approach. It is always better to invest where the risk is shared. Mm. I am very much interested in understanding what you mean by that. Why don't you make yourself a major investor in the business instead of buying outright? And by making myself a major investor in the business, the original owner will still be part of the business and possibly still the CEO? Yes. And then... He or she may still have an edge over me, right? Does it really matter, Your Highness? The most important thing is you will be making a whole lot of profit yes. from the investment. 
With all due respect, Madam Lawyer, that is not acceptable. Okay? Your Highness, uh, if I may say... Uh, barrister at law, before you add anything, you need to understand what is happening here. I am that all-concurrent king. The very definition of man alone. Nobody stays under the same roof with me and makes more money than I do. You told me already that the business we are talking about is a stock feeder. Automatically, I understand that to mean that it's a vital business in this part of the world. I want to have it. And I want to have it faster than immediately. Your Highness, I know that there is never anything you wanted to acquire in life that you failed. I'm happy you know that. Now, if you understand me to be that man who has never failed in anything, I want you to make more effort. I want to have that business. You are my lawyers that I pay so much. Call it work. Get it done. With due respect, uh, Your Highness, in this case, it will be very difficult because the family that I want... The family is nothing. Forget about that family. They are nothing. You need to take that proposal that we prepared. Take it back to them. Let them study the proposal one more time. Possibly this time around, they will see the reason to bend. Because that business that I want to buy, I am going to buy it. Okay, Your Highness. We will do just that. Thank you. What is the next agenda? Yeah, yes, Your Highness. The competitor we spoke no, about. No, no, I don't want to talk about the competitors. Why should I sit down here talking about some fools that already constitute themselves into competitors to me? I am going to wipe them out of the face of the earth. What did you just say? Why are you jittering as if you are getting to know me for the very first time? They want to put me out of business. I was even lenient enough to have made them an offer, which they rejected. Now they have just two options to choose from. It is either they will sell the business to me and leave, or they will refuse to sell, and all of them will die in their sleep, and I will still have that business. I humble myself before the great deity, sitting as a king of Idu. Has any visitor come to see me in the palace? Yes, Your Majesty. A letter with a royal seal arrived, Your Majesty. <laughs> letter from Ezi Babuchimo Keke of Umu Bolo Kingdom. It's very obvious that he has decided to come and pay homage to the deity king of Idu. And this will send the very strong signal to other kings. Alusing will leave Bobo. Adi This is indeed very nice. And other kings will learn from this. They must come one by one to pay homage to the deity king of the Your You acted in ignorance. You acted in ignorance. You deviated from the ways of our gods. 
the ways of our ancestors run after a religion. A religion you know nothing about. A religion you do not know where it's coming from. A religion you do not know where it is going. You only know the few, the very few you were told. By this consecration with Inzu and prayer, you will be connected back with the gods of Umu. Go home and offer whatever you can to your personality. Fowl, goat, ram, cow, whatsoever you can afford, offer it to your personality and pray especially to your chi. I will always go before you. Let your chi be by your right, by your left, before you and behind you. I see an oath, an unjust oath. What is that oath? I ask a question, elders in council, and you are mopping at me. I can see an evil oath staring at me. What is that oath? It is that oath that makes you not behave like me. And why am I having this impression that the elders in council who vowed to guide me on this path are actually hiding something from me? We are not hiding anything from you, your highness. He warned us never to mention this to anyone. Who? My father? Not your father. It was Eze Epokotai Pon of Idu. We believe he was the one who killed your father after we signed the land off to him. You can be serious. Tell me, tell me about it, I'm interested. Uh, Your Highness, uh, we, still, we still don't understand how he did it. He summoned all of us into an occult room and, uh, and they exposed us to a decorated uh, box inside another bigger box. The decorated box of dreaded masquerades? How did you know, Your Highness? A box decorated with images of dreadful masquerades. A box that wielded enormous power. As we are all being suffocated, your father pleaded with him to spare our lives, which he did, but on one condition. That you sign up the land to him? Exactly. And he presented the paper there in the room. 
and we signed off the land to him. And he warned us never to tell anybody about that meeting. Mm -hmm. It was after that evil encounter that your father died. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, we've decided to leave the evil king alone and mind our business. Oh, yes, of course. Now you see. Now you see that my quest for vengeance is justified. I must go after because I won and I must get him. I won't spare him. May all rise. May all rise! As I raise this ancient and sacred offer, the staff of Umobolo, I hereby uproot all the effects of that oath. Men who were transported by evil means into an occult room are forced to take an oath can never, never be bound by that oath. Men who were transported by evil means into an occult room and were forced to take an oath can never, never be bound by that oath. Men who were transported by evil means into an occult room and we are forced to take an oath. Can never, never be bound by that oath. Men who were transported by evil means into an occult room and we are forced to take an oath. Can never, never be bound by that oath. What is going on? What is this escape that I feel? What is this fire? What is this fire that is raging from afar? Who? Who is this enemy of his own soul? that will ignite fire against Eze Bukote Pono, the deity king of Idu. Who? Do you know the implication of what you're asking me to do? I have confirmed that that murderer killed my father and you're asking me to allow sleeping dogs lie? Why are you so determined to die before your time? Your father died at the age of 73. I think it is necessary to educate you, probably. My father did not die a natural death. He was killed. Okay. He was killed. But at least before he was killed, your father was a well-known, powerful man of this land. Yet, this evil man was able to summon him to his palace forced him to sign some papers, killed him after them. Did you not think that this man will also kill you just the way he killed your father? Listen to me, my beautiful wife. I don't want to discuss this issue with you again. Allow me fight my battles and wage my wars. The man who killed my father has murdered sleep. I don't want to begin to see you as an enemy. <sighs> Someone help me explain to him. I don't know what it is. But I want it to stop. I don't know this fire that is burning from afar. But I want you to stop immediately. It must not get here.
chicken now. You've not touched your food. Why can't you just let this man go and move on with your life? Ikenna. I will fight back. I forbid you. You are all I have. I lost your father and I will not stand and watch you kill yourself. But the one thing I don't understand is how you accord that man so much respect. He cannot kill me. He has killed people greater than you. He has killed kings that had powers and charms. A Pokote Kwonu will kill anyone that crosses his path. He's evil. He will kill you. Forget about this man. I thought we agreed on this already. Well, I thought we did. But there is no deal, mother. Can't you see? Is this life? How can I be alive and son is taking what rightfully belongs to me and I cannot do anything? I am dying slowly of the realization that he took what rightfully belongs to me and I cannot do anything. You are not dying. And you will not die anytime soon. You will live to achieve your full potential as a man. Let this man be. Let him go and move on with your life. I believe that God will rise for his people. Son, come and eat your food. Move on with your life. I thought you had something better to say. So it is true, you actually came to see me. Were you expecting to see someone else? The truth is that I was not expecting anybody at all. I sent you a letter to notify you about my coming. Yes. I got a very surprising letter and I must have to tell you that in my wildest dream, I was not expecting anybody who is a ruler over the people of Omo to come before the deity king of Idu to pay homage. The letter I sent you was for a meeting. A meeting between two men who rule as kings in two different kingdoms, separated by greed. There was no part of that letter that stated that I was coming to pay you homage. And let me clear misconception. I don't see you as a deity. You are an ordinary human being, and I will continue to relate with you as such. In one very short sentence, why are you here? I have come to make a very simple demand. That you give back only land to its original owners, the people of Omobo. How dare you? How dare you come before the deity king to insult yourself? Are you out of your mind? I didn't insult you. Neither did I insult myself. I just made a fair request. Give back only land to its original owners, my people. It's our land, and we want it back. And listen to me. I come in peace. I haven't come to make trouble. And that is why I haven't said anything about my father's death. I can see you have some balls. That is why you will stand before the deity king of Idu to speak such nonsense. I will respond to you when I will respond to you. But right now, I want you to leave my palace. You said you are here in peace. I want you to equally live in peace. Leave now before I change my mind.
I wasn't expecting you. I hope all is well. You can sit. No, Your Highness. We couldn't just sit back in our houses, knowing full well that you're having such a meeting with the deity king of Idu. Oh, come on. It irritates me when elders in council refer to that scoundrel as a deity. He's a nobody. He's just an ordinary human being. But I tell you something. I will annihilate him before your very eyes. No, Your Highness. If you knew what you had in mind, you would not have embarked on that journey in the first place. I tell you something. This is war. And we are going to win this war without a fight. Okay, can you tell us what happened back then? <laughs> you will have seen his face. He was very angry when I confronted him. I told him point blank that my reason for coming was to take back on me. He stared at me in the face and was so disappointed. And he promised to get back to me. Just like that? Your Highness, he could mean to kill you. He cannot. Because when a mortal oversteps the bounds set by his chief, he will be buried without a funeral. It was could mean a lot of things, Your Highness. Chiamaka, can you stand on the sacred totem of Omobolo to swear that you weren't the one who invited those elders to wait for me here? And why should I swear? Yes, I was the one who invited them. And I did that because I was worried about my husband. Is that a crime? Does it really mean you don't know the man you're married to? I know you, sweetheart. I do. My husband. The king of Omobolo. My husband who returned from Ireland and cannot boast of knowing the extent men can go in this part of the world to silence opposition. That my husband decided to pay the devil himself a visit. Now tell me, why then should I sit, relax and do nothing? Sometimes when you talk, I get so irritated. I feel as if you don't know what I am capable of doing. I may not know all things. But the mere fact you went to confront that demon in human form. There's a troop of assassins coming our way. And I assure you, by the time they get here, they will shoot themselves in the head. Ebukote Kwan is yet to recover from the shock I gave him today. You can bet your money on that. What exactly happened when you went to meet him? When he saw me, he was surprised. He thought I came to pay him homage. Imagine the riffraff. I told him that my reason for coming was to take back on Yi land. He promised to get back to me, and I am patiently waiting for him. I don't get it. Does it mean the man is not really strong as they paint him to be? It has become a rule in my world that anyone who insults me, who undermines me, must be invited into this place, summoned into this place to feed the wrath of an angry king. It is only a fool that will step on the table with an angry tiger. 
il va bouger. The fool who parades himself as the king of Umubolo, I summon you. I summon you here this night. You have to come and explain why I will not kill you before your time. Ibabushi. What? What are you? I heard my name. What's way? Where? Maybe it's a dream. I think it's a dream. Are you sure it's not the voice of Ibukoti? Oh, Chamaka, stop. Don't mention that evil name here. Does it mean we can have a, a peaceful night rest without having him in our thoughts? Well, I'm just saying, at this rate, we should expect anything. Nothing. Nothing is going to happen. I am going to win this war without lifting a finger. Not when the universe is behind us. But... No uh, buts. Let's go back to sleep. No, I'm scared. You shouldn't be. Sleep. Okay? I don't know why you are playing the stubborn. It was in this room. Right in this room that I summoned your father with all his cabinet members. It was here that they signed the only year land of the game. It was here that I killed your father. Ezi Babushio Keke the first before he went to Umobolo and died a useless death. You must come here this night and you must explain why I will not kill you before this time. Ibabushimo Keke. I am the deity king who rules in Idu. Nobody has ever challenged me. Nobody has ever argued with me. As someone you hear this night, to come and explain why you are increasingly crossing my path. Who gave him the power? This part of the world is too small to share with anybody who is ambitious. Hmm. Keke, the fool, parading himself as the king of the For daring to resist my summon, I am going to prove to you that two masquerades, two masquerades can never dance in this way at the same time.
someone is at the line for you. Oh, I see. Hello? Who is this? A child who derives pleasure passing through dangerous tracks will ultimately disappear from those tracks. Will you ever claim you don't know what that means? I recognize this voice, you colorless chameleon. But I tell you something. The gap between the weak and the mighty is in the mind. But in reality, the weak can become mighty and the mighty weak in just a matter of seconds. Are you claiming you don't know this? Ibabuchi, you are a riffraff. You are a riffraff to speak parables to a deity like me. How dare you? I mean, who are you? To demand on me land back from me. The same land would be swallowed by the deity. Listen to me, Bokote Kwon. I am not cut out for this charade. I am only interested in retrieving the land you took forcefully from my people. For opening your mouth and mentioning fight to the man like me. From now going forward, I want you to keep looking behind you. Because I must come for you. It might interest you to know that I am already on your case. Let this be a follow-up notice. Yesterday's visit was the first. Piece by piece, I am going to end you. Security is the state of being free from harm or danger. And danger is the possibility of suffering harm or injury. Ibabuchi Ngokeke, I am going to make the whole of this country very insecure for you. <laughs> the day taking of Idu will become your nightmare. Listen to me. I am not cut out for these empty threats. Okay? I don't like cutting calls on people. But if you are done with your threats, cut your call and prepare for what is coming. Threats are for dreamers. I fancy myself a realist. I am going to make you bleed. And I want you to go through history. Each time I make anybody to start bleeding, the person must bleed to death. Is it threatening you? Why are you always jittery? I mean, why are you afraid? Honey, why is it so difficult for you to listen to reason? This man you are calling into an open war is the devil himself. Listen to me, Chuck. A man who is with his ancestors is already above the aberration called the devil. I will tear that idiot into smithereens. It's a promise. Get me something to eat. Pastor Paul, I am trying to figure out what my wife told you that prompted this unscheduled visit. You are waging war against him.
to reclaim what was stolen from your father. If I may ask your highness, at what cost? Cost? Is there something I'm not getting here? I heard you are going the traditional way in this battle. What do you mean by the traditional way? I heard that you are now friends with the chief priest. Do you expect us to be enemies? No, your highness, but... Oh, hold on, Pastor Paul. Allow me to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is his. Your Highness, what is your understanding about that passage in the scripture? Pastor Paul, my understanding is my understanding. It might interest you to know that there was already in place a solemn traditional religion in Omobolo before the missionaries brought this thing they brought that you now believe in. I want to hold firmly to that old religion. Why? Is Christianity no longer enough for you? Far from that. I am simply a king, and I intend to rule the same way my forefathers ruled, holding tenaciously to the ancient religion. You are deviating from the teachings of the church. First of all, this is war, and I intend to fight this war and emerge from it triumphant. Your Highness, if you will listen to me, leave that land. Move on with your life. You are already a rich king. You do not need that land. Pastor Paul, this kind of preaching is not for a man like me. I intend to recover a land that was forcefully taken from my people. Is there anything wrong in that? That is what I want, and I must get it. You could be killed in the process, Your Highness. That king has killed many people, and nothing is done about it. Who cares? Allow that be my headache. I am going to fight that man to a standstill. I assure you, I am going to win. My queen. I advise you pray for your husband. I don't understand, Pastor. I can't explain why a well-traveled man like him would choose a forgotten religion over the truth. Pastor, that's exactly why I called you. My husband believes the truth lies in his ancestors. Yes, he says something like that to me. And he's determined to say this to the end. Pastor, Honestly, I'm scared. My husband is going to get killed. Pray for him. That is what you are going to do. And I'll do the same. Do you understand me? Let us pray for him. Go in and relax. God is on your side. Jamaka, you invited your pastor to see me without due protocol. Is that supposed to be an insult or what? Sweetheart, I want you to pick up your phone and call your son and daughter. Start advising them fatherly. Because when you're gone, I don't want the whole body to be on me. And what exactly are you talking about? Are you going to pretend like you do not know the reason for my anger? Listen, you want me to forfeit a land, an ancestral land that belonged to my people? Simply because everyone is afraid of the current owner? I want you to let go of that land. Because the current owner will kill you. I want you to stop this stupid fight of yours because it's not going to end well. And I also want you to end this ridiculous relationship you have with your chief priest. Ask me why. Because in this modern age and time it will only make you look stupid. Chemak, I have nothing against the Western religion. But as a learned man who has traversed the nooks and crannies of this world, I have come to the realization that there are certain aspects of our traditional religion which our forefathers practiced that ought to be upheld. I'm not being hypocritical here. No, not at all. It's called being wise and giving honor to whom honor is due. No matter where you go in life, a time will come when you will need the support of our ancestors. I'm only paying my respects. 
So that when that time comes, I wouldn't be left out in the cold. Are you going to start going to the shrine and possibly making sacrifices to the deity of your ancestors? My beautiful wife, you have to understand where I am coming from. A piece of land. I mean a piece of ancestral land that legally should be ours was forcefully taken from us by, by a usurper, a criminal. And you want me to let that go? It's not going to happen. Listen to me. It might interest you to know that diamonds and other precious stones have been found on that land. You want to let that go? We have investments, no doubt. Investments everywhere. But now we have a diamond vomiting land. Think about it. Countries have gone to war for less. Sweetheart, all I'm saying, I do not want anything to happen to you. That's all. You are my life. Please. I understand you perfectly, my queen. Nothing will happen to me. Okay? So quit this fretting and fidgeting. Nothing will happen. I will go for that land and I must get it. I'm thinking about the future of this family. How do you mean, Mother? Mr. Lion is so cool. He has become a wreck since he buried his son. That child was his only child, you know. That's quite unfortunate. But I don't see how that has got to do with this family. You promised me that you would get married last February. And this is August. And you haven't said anything about it again. Are you serious, Mother? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you really serious? I'm still at the cost of fighting. Trying to take what rightfully belongs to me, which a fellow man like me took away from me. And you're asking me to go get married? Well, let's assume I get married. How do you think she would see me? A loser. A failure. A weakling. And she would continue to remind me every day of my life. Is that what you want? So you want to put your life on hold because of an evil man who does not think of anyone else except himself. You are my only son. And only sons like you should marry early. Really? Yes. All right. Let me state this to you loud and clear for the very last time. I am going to continue to fight until I take back what rightfully belongs to me. And afterwards, I will take a wife and give you grandchildren. Are we clear on this? In as much as the land in question was previously registered as a property of Umobilu Kingdom, is now under the name of King of Idu. Land officer, I understand exactly where you're coming from. But there is a Bukote Kwano used evil powers to take that land from my people. And I want it back. Your Highness, we in the land office know the history. But the truth of the matter is, we don't want to be involved in anything that has to do with King of Idu. Your Highness, he's dangerous. Listen to me, young man. I think it is pertinent for me to educate you a bit. Every human being is dangerous to a certain degree. Nobody has the monopoly for violence or nuisance. Not at all. He might be the legal owner of that land as we speak. But I tell you that he didn't pay a dime to my father. Are you trying to tell me that I cannot contest ownership? Is that what you're saying? You can go ahead, Your Highness. But only inform us after you win.
humble myself before the great deity that rules as king in the Du Kingdom. What is it? There is a visitor outside my king. A woman, deaf and dumb. She came up with a description, which means that she's here to see you. Benson. Yes, Your Highness. I read the letter you dropped in the palace suggestion box. And I must say that I was very impressed. You struck a chord that really attracted me. You said something about education. Can you explain further? Okay, Your Highness. I want to further my education in the Open University. I will still be working here. I just want to know if I can get any help from the palace, Your Highness. Wow. That's very thoughtful of you. I mean, coming from a young man your age. I'm very impressed. You just got me where it mattered most. Huh? The palace secretary will be briefed. And I assure you, you will not only get help here. This palace will fund your education 100%. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Highness. In my place, you know, where I come from, we are never tired of consoling a man who has lost his wife. So I console you, Kabiesi, on the loss of your wife. The struck man of our place. I didn't invite you all the way from Owo to come and uh, sympathize with me on the loss of my wife. That page is already closed in my history. She is dead and she is forgotten. I'm sorry to say this. I called you here because I wanted to guide me. I want to marry another wife. That idiot wife of mine was into the business of booknosing into things that do not concern her. And she met her end as a result. Now I want another woman. I want you to help me find the one who will not have time to interfere in my private things. The wife who will concentrate on her duties as the queen of a duo. Hmm. Mm. Kabiesi, I sense two things from what you have said. First, you want to be transformed into a god so that people will fear you. Exactly. Two, you want to take another wife to replace the one you have ended? Well, almost what I just told you now. Barely. You will get another wife, Kabiesi. But that wife must be deaf and dumb. Are you out of your mind? I mean, how can you say that? How do you expect a king of my class to file out with a queen who is deaf and dumb? And I'm with you, man. Kabis, it is not me who wants it. It is the gods that have designed it. For you to become the powerful king and deity that you want to become, you need a woman that is deaf and dumb to open the doors for you to become that deity which you want to be. Ben, you can see. She must be deaf and dumb. Well, I think I understand where you are coming from, and I think I understand what you are saying. You want me to marry a classy woman. 
vibrant, good-looking woman who can be presented as a queen. And then I will use the powers I have to transform her into the fandom. Kabishi, that is not what I have said. That woman must be deaf and dumb by nature. That is even before you meet her, she should be deaf and dumb. How can you say that? Deaf and dumb women, to the best of my knowledge, are not classy. I have never met a deaf and dumb woman who is beautiful. No. Even if when they are beautiful, you will still discover that something is wrong with their class. To the best of my knowledge, deaf and dumb women in this part of the world are beggars. Is that what you want for a man of my class to be married to a beggar? Kabisi, right now. It is not me, oh. But Kabisi, eh, the powers you have are able to find such a woman for you that is deaf and dumb. My advice is that when you find such a woman, Kabisi, marry her quickly, no. Marry her quickly, eh, because she's the only one who will open that door for you to go and become that deity that you want. Kabisi. Deaf and a dumb woman. To do it, I feel jobba. Oh, shangre. So, I feel shalom. I need no soothsayer to tell me you are the one. Beautiful deaf and the dumb. The deaf and the dumb woman I've been looking for. I, I know you, you may not hear me, but I am convinced from the deepest part of my heart that the forces I am obedient to are the ones who brought you here today to assist me fulfill a very special purpose in my life. You will come with me now. You will come with me. Hey! <laughs> 
You were saying something. Yeah, your highness. How can you say you met a woman yesterday and today you want to marry her? Well, you see, Wafo, you are wrong when you say I want to marry her today. For I have already married her. That same yesterday I met her. Your highness. Your highness. Are you really serious, my king? As a Bokote Kwonu is not the kind of man that will say something when he is not sure. Uh, um, Your Majesty, but, I mean, marrying a woman you, you just met is quite risky. Why don't you give out some time to enable us to assess her, or even you, so that we will be able to. Hey, shut up! What kind of useless language is that? Why did you start advising me? Listen, I have not called you here to seek your opinion. For I have already made up my mind on this. Like I said, I am marrying the woman already. I just called us because I want both of you to accompany me to Obendida to pay her bride price properly. Mm -hmm. uh, your Highness, uh, we will we'll, we'll go with you. Yes. Uh, we will go with you. Uh, uh, have you chosen a date yet? You are going today. What? From here now. Yeah. Your Highness. Do you have a problem with that? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> sure, do you have a problem with that? Yeah, okay. Do you? Good. Alright. Wait for me outside. I'll meet you shortly. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have tried stopping him, but yet my husband is so determined to go into war with this devil. Did you allow him to do what he wants to do? Excuse me, Carol. Did I hear you well? Do you want me to lose my husband or what? Men do not like it when their wives oppose them too much. You have already made your point and he knows you stand on the matter. Dragging for long will give him an impression about his wife. I don't want him to start seeing you in a bad light. Well, he can only see me that way if he knows I'm actually looking up for him. That's it. You're married to a king, not just the king who just became king from nowhere. Your father-in-law was a king, and his son got prepared for the throne. There is a way kings reason to not oppose him longer than you have done. It can go. Bad. <laughs> I have heard you, Carol, my lecturer. <laughs> He's all right. He's all right then. I'll call you later. Bye. Mm -hmm. This is indeed an important brief to all the palace workers. Standing here is a beautiful woman of Obwendida Kingdom who is now wife to the king and she is the queen of Idu. 
These two elders who accompanied me to open the to pay her bride price can attest to the fact that we married her in line with the marriage laws of Obwende the people. Yeah. Your Highness, uh, our Queen, as the leader of the elders in council, I welcome you to this palace. We are the ancient staff of Idu Kingdom Rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're welcome, and your stay here will be glorious. Ah, queen. Is there is something that uh, you are missing that I need to clarify you? Uh, what is it, Your Highness? You you followed me to Obendida to pay the bread price of a woman that you did not even see. She is the one. Yes. <laughs> The beautiful woman of Obwende that I have married, yes. who is now the queen. Yes. But she cannot hear you because she is deaf and dumb. Yeah. Your, Your Highness, you, 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 did you, you, you said... I am certain you heard me. That she, she cannot speak or even hear what we are saying. Is she, I know. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, uh, no, uh, I cannot have a problem with that. I have not always had a problem with your others and uh, <laughs> good, <everything>. good, good. <laughs> I like that. Yes. You see, she is the beautiful woman of Obendida. Yes. And she is now the queen of Idu. Yes, yes. Uh, and nothing can ever change that. Yes. <laughs> Uzondo. Yes, Your Majesty. Please get something very nice for the elders to drink. Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, I will be back with you shortly. Let yeah. me take her back to the room. Yes. He has married another wife. <sighs> he has married another wife just like that. Mm. Hey! Uncle, this is a great insult on our family. I know I have been keeping quiet, but this time around, huh, I can't take this. What do you want to do? Bash into the palace and confront him? Take a gun to his head? Yes, <laughs> that is what he deserves. You will do no such thing. Yes. What if he marries another wife and the woman is deaf and dumb? How? What? Yes. The woman the king replaced your sister with is deaf and dumb. As in... She can neither speak nor hear. Why would he do that? Oh, I don't know whether to feel extremely insulted on behalf of my sister or laugh. You see, the king is evil. We do not understand why he decided to replace your sister with deaf and dumb. All I know, no matter how the Iroko tree is, it might be called down one day. Nothing lasts forever. One day he will surely die. Cut down. Uncle, mm -hmm. I think I like that phrase. Mm -hmm. Cut down. Yes. Because that is what yeah. I'm going to do to him. Cut him down. It will be very painful to my sister if that Iroko tree finally die on its own. He doesn't deserve a decent death. Okay. Allow the ghost to handle it. Do not move ahead of the ghost. instructed and I have lost count of the number of times I have experienced the woman in you what else what else must I do to unlock what, what you represent death and the dump
The decorated doors of deadly masquerades. I cannot thank you enough. I never knew that a deaf and dumb woman could be this good, this sweet, and this priceless. I am hoping. I am hoping that you are not going to ask me to offer her for a sacrifice. Listen. <laughs> the decorated balls of dreadful masquerades. I am prepared to offer all the women of Idu in place of this one. I want you to give me the opportunity to enjoy the woman in half, for at least the next five years. I know you can do that for me. And for all the time's sake, I am pleading with you. Is there a way you can assist me? Is there a way you can help me to unlock what she represents in my life? Do it for me. For old time sake. The dreaded boss of deadly masquerades. Can you explain to me what is going on? I have just summoned the Babushi Wokeke. The fool who parades himself as the king of Umobulu to come here and explain himself. Why is he not here? Someone Babushi. And he's cheated here. One of you wants. It's she. I have never someone hit she. I have no business with his she. I want to deal with. Ibabushi Okeke, the second the person. He has committed a whole lot of atrocities. And I want him to come here in person and explain himself why he must undermine the authority of a king as elevated as the deity king of Idu. What are you doing here in this main building of this palace at this time of the night? Your Highness, I'm sorry, Your Highness. I heard someone scream. That's why I came out. You know, it's my duty to protect the palace. Hey. Protect which palace? Who told you you are the one that protects the palace? Didn't I warn you and all the people working in this palace that nobody must come to this main building once it is 10 p.m.? Didn't I warn you? You did, Your Highness, but... Hey, but nothing. For attempting to see what you are not even qualified to see. Your lousy soul will not amount to anything. Even your cups will not be buried. It was my father I saw. He came to my room. 
it, it was crystal clear. It, it's not a dream. Are you trying to scare me? What do you mean by that? I'm not trying to scare you. I only narrated what happened. Is it not obvious that that devilish king is the one trying to summon your spirit every night because he wants to kill you the same way he killed your father? And it is obvious he has failed woefully. As we speak, he's crippled. How? Have you spoken to Owefi Amanda Neza since then? The old man has already done his part. It is now left for me to confront that criminal that has continued to hold on to what is not his. Sweetheart, you refuse talking to Pastor Paul because you allege that the traditional priest is better than the orthodox man of God. It's a fact. Didn't I state the obvious? Even the authorities that ordain them pastors and priests know that our traditional religion is more solemn than what the missionaries brought to them. Why then are you not talking to the man? Listen, this demon is not crippled. I can swear on my life that he has been the one trying to attack you. Honey, talk to the priest you believe in. At least it's better than doing nothing. Hmm? Please. The strong man of our war, Kabiesi. Finally, I have married the deaf and dumb woman like you instructed. I found her and I married her already. I called you because I need you to guide me. Why is it that I am not I am not yet as powerful as you, you promised? Why is it that that enemy of my soul is still not down yet? That enemy of my soul who is parading himself as the king of Omobolo, he is still alive. Just last night, I tried to summon his, his spirit and end him once and for all. Not only was that process truncated, but I was slapped by his ship. Somebody slapped you, Kabiesi. Ha! Kabiesi, that slap from the dead man has already stopped everything, no? <laughs> the struggle of a war. I did not tell you that I was slapped by a dead man. I was slapped by his guidance angel, who is his she in this part of our world. Kabiesi. Hey, hey. Afijo Bawa. Afija Bawa. Biabajo, Biabaja, Kashati Bawa, Lubata. Kabisi, a slap is a slap. If we do not uh, use because of yam to lick the oil, <laughs> we will use because of the oil to eat the yam. A slap is a slap, Kabisi. But the thing is that it has stopped this process. And then there is only one solution for you for now. And uh, what is the way? Kabisi, you have to get another wife. What? Then, Kabisi, because the deaf and dumb woman is not giving you what you need. So, you have to get another. But you did not tell me that I have two of them. Eh, Kabisi, because uh, signs are showing that she's not the deaf and dumb woman you should have. So you should uh, get rid of her. Then, are you saying I should kill her? No, no, Kabiesi. I have not said you should kill her. Just divorce her. How are you saying that? Can you be saying that kind of thing? I practically force her family members to release her to me as my wife. How can I possibly go back and say that I want to divorce her? It's going to sound stupid and make me look basic. Kabiesi. Kabiesi, I am beginning to see the hand of the monkey in the soup. Eh, which monkey are we soup? Eh, Kabiesi. From the way you sound, it looks like you have already started falling in love with this one. Ah, <laughs> the strong man of war. <laughs> I never knew that marriage to a deaf and dumb could be this sweet. Ah, the woman I'm telling you about. Uh, too sweet. Come here, see. You have one at all. The woman is beautiful, no doubt. You will use sense to deal with some things when we are an elder. But the truth is that you cannot have two of them. You can only have one. Yes, man, the cabbage is only one. Then you have to look for another means to deal with that your friend, uh, enemy. Uh, before it is too late. Oh. Ben, the cabbage.
I have very strong instincts, and I try as much as possible to obey my instincts. Something tells me that this suggested visit to a psychic is not appropriate. We are up against a very formidable foe. A man who is deeply rooted in the occult. And the best way to handle him is to go the traditional way. I am convinced that your psychic cannot do anything about this. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Uh, trust me on this one, okay? I know your chief priest is a good man, no doubt. I know he's doing everything possible to guide you, yes. But believe me when I say there is nothing wrong with you briefing another authority. Yes. Okay. Now you tell me. What do I tell him when we get there? Don't tell him anything. Even though I do not know how those guys work. But they will solve this without even hearing from you. True. All right. It's okay. But one more thing. I don't want you to gloat over this. I don't want you to, to take credit for this. That you convinced me, for I am not convinced. I am only doing this because of the love I have for you. Ah, I love those words. Thank you, sweetheart. For the fact you're going with me, I'm happy. Come on. Okay. I know you may not understand why I am this excited. <laughs> they are going to catch that idiot and then they are going to kill him. They will cut his remains into pieces of meat and feed the hungry crocodiles. <laughs> I 
keep forgetting that you are deaf and dumb anyway. But I am indeed very excited because my enemies are going down one by one. <laughs> hey, drink up, go up, mommy. Be for my little money. Are you being serious with me right now? That you are not going to report this matter to the police? Sweetheart, you tell me. Where exactly do you want the cops to go and find them? You said it yourself back there. You know who sent them. You even sent them back with a message. So why are we not following it up? Chamaka, I am a king. And a king should behave as one at all times. I agree with you. But you are up against a king who does not act like a king. He is a corporate here. And we need to follow him up with the law. I am highly elevated in the real politics of Igbo land. Ebokotekwan is a failure and do not expect me to join issues with him. I wouldn't be found dancing naked in the market square with him. Not at all. You called him a failure because he failed today? He has failed since the beginning and he will continue to fail. Why? Why are you being stubbornly relaxed about this whole thing? Why? I don't get it. Do you have that much confidence in your chief priest? Not at all. But I have confidence in the ability of good to triumph over evil. I just caved into your request. I followed you to see a psychic. And what happened? We got well laid. And thank the gods we survived it. Let me tell you something. What do you think blinded those boys? What did I just hear you say? You went blind before the fool I asked you to go and kill? What are you saying? Are you mad or something? What tales are you telling me? Okay, what happened now? You can see. Now that he's no longer there, you can see. You know what? Get off my phone. I said, get off my phone! That works for the king. How did you collect my phone? Shut up! Give me back my phone. You are the cook in the palace, aren't you? I am. Good. From now henceforth, you have become my sister. How? I don't even know you. You are supposed to be saying okay. Okay. Good. As we are stepping out of here right now, you tell anyone who cares to know that I am your elder brother and that I've insisted on following you to the palace today to see where you actually walk. How is that even going to be possible? They, they know my family. Shh. Okay. There is always a family member they do not know. And I am that family member they do not know. As we speak right now, your parents have been 
kidnapped. Shh. And any attempt from you and my mission to the palace today fails, they will die. Where is your kitchen knife? to the sitting room to mother that fool and possibly his wife don't play the hero please if you raise any alarm and I get arrested my boys that are holding your family will kill them please spare my parents please if you raise any alarm and I get arrested <laughs> Remain here. Don't move. Say nothing. Do nothing. Who are you and what are you doing here? You will soon find out when you join your ancestors. How dare you! my life. Criminal? You know what? I want to concentrate. I want to be left alone. You go, 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 leave. Should have known that no one attacks a king in his palace and survives it. Your Highness, I didn't have a choice. He said, he said they have already kidnapped my parents and that they would kill them if I didn't let him into the palace. He forced me here and he seized my phone. So I was unable to do anything. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Your Highness, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why am I having this feeling? Why do I have this wrong signal? His mission is to penetrate that palace. Stab that useless king with a poisoned knife. 
and leave him to decay in 30 minutes. Why does it appear to me as if he failed? Why does it appear to me that the useless king is still alive? What is going on? I just had a conversation with your parents. They're at home. Nobody kidnapped them. They are fine. Your Highness, I'm sorry he deceived me. It's okay. I understand exactly what happened. Your Highness, I do not know what you were planning. But this girl who brought in a criminal to this palace is fired. No, she's hey. not. She's not. Get back to work. What do you mean she's not? Come on, Chalka. That young girl was afraid. The fool made her believe that he had her where it mattered most. And why do you want to make her a victim of Ebokote Kwanu's stupidity? The most important thing is that he tried and failed. Do you know this girl might be working for him? Have you thought of that? You know that is not possible. Oh, come on, your highness. I'm not comfortable with this at all. Chuck, if I must tell you, there is always an edge I have as a king. Are you still on this? You are not doing bad in business. Why not let this evil king go? I am afraid, mother, I cannot. Each time I... Close my eyes to sleep. I see prominent ancestors staring at me as a failure. You are not a failure. And who are these ancestors that make you feel this way? The ancestors of my family. They are directing me to the priest. Which priest? The priest of Idu, Obwefi Ukadige. Since the police cannot do anything about this, I am sure he can. You are really going to descend this law to the level of this evil king to go diabolic just because of a piece of land? Aikena. Visiting the priest is not going diabolical, mother. It's to seek for solution. I am sure something positive is going to come out of it. Trust me, mother. Don't take this visit to mean that we have become friends or any of sort. I am a well-known Christian and nothing would change that. I just want to know what your plans are. Epokote Ekwonu has tried several times to kill my husband. The reason I'm here with you is, will you just sit and wait Till he succeeds? I'm one guy more grimly, baby. I'm more grimly, baby, and happy, Jesse Bam. Well, uh, first of all, I have to tell you this. On this earth plane, there are so many kinds of religions. People are free to associate themselves with any of their choice. Oh, yes. Uh, that you belong to another religion does not make you an enemy to me. In other words, we can't be enemies because we don't belong to the same religion. That is what I'm saying. The world has evolved beyond this religion you're struggling so hard to keep. Yeah. I don't mind. Uh, well, the thing is that no matter what your picture is of a religious evolution, your own personal concept of religious evolution. It has nothing to do with tradition, our forefathers' tradition, because they have been. Your concept of religious evolution cannot belittle them. Very, very simple. Because these traditions have been since people in Dutch Arabia. And, and it, it, has, it, has, it has been our culture, our way of life. It has been part of us, we have been part of them. 
there is nothing you can do to separate us from tradition. It's natural. It is very natural. The, the, another thing is there are some sacred culture and tradition that you cannot neglect. Whether you recognize them or not, their effects are there. So, uh, uh, another one is the white man has his own to maintain. He maintains his own over there, wherever he's coming from. My queen, can I ask you a very simple question? Why can't we maintain ours? You and I. Can you go back and you first go back and I need an assurance from you that the fell man will not succeed in his quest to silence my husband. Oh. Uh, well, uh, the truth is that your husband has the full support of our ancestors. Because he has not soiled his hands in evil. And if you must know, that is the greatest protection whatsoever. Of course, your husband has his hands clean. Wifi, you are the one misleading my husband. <laughs> and I tell you, should anything, anything whatsoever happens to my husband, you would have me to contend with. Uh, God, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, listen to me, listen to me. I hope you will also remember, you will not forget to give thanks and praises to our ancestors at the end of the day. If finally nothing happens to your husband. But if you have to appease them. But you have to appease them. If not, happens to your husband, will you remember to give praises and thanks to our ancestors? Stroke man of a war. I called you because I actually need you to explain what is going on to me. I have done everything you asked me to do, but somehow nothing is working. Things are not working according to plan. Can you please explain? He must be a very strong adversary indeed. Uh, but don't worry. I will send you a present very soon. What kind of present? <laughs> the kind of something that you will use to finish the man once and for all. That something I am talking about is the one I have used to bring down many men of God. Those ones who claim themselves to be men of God. I have brought them down with it. I think I like that. I like that. <laughs> so, when I finally receive this present from you, how am I going to use it? Kavis, I will explain it to you. Matuka <laughs> uh, You explain now. <laughs> In this era that increasing number of our young men seek justice, where justice seems to be perverted, it gladdens my heart seeing young men like you seek for justice the natural way. I came to you because I have lost interest in the so-called judicial process. Hmm. Where haven't I gone to? Which office, which office of authority haven't I been to? I have been to the police to make this report. I even went straight into the area commander's office to make this report. And nothing happened. It is obvious that they are all scared of him. Ikena, do you want to go faster than the gods of it do? No. Which brings me to why I am here. I want you to guide me. I want you to, to, to tell me exactly what I should do. Mm. Yes, it is true that he has enormous powers. But is he more powerful than the gods? Now you are talking. 
Now you're talking. Ekpokote Ikono is a man up against the gods. But I tell you what, they will sort him out at their own time. Do not interfere. You don't understand. I have not come to interfere. Ubuifi, that man crippled me as a man. He took one thing that mattered most to my family. Our ancestral land. Like I said, I have reported to all the authorities I know. But nothing seemed to happen. That is why I've come. If I advise you as your priest, will you heed it? I don't have a choice. Good. Allow the gods to wage this war. Today is the day he promised me. The day he will send me the effigy to kill that fool that tampers with my peace. Why is the parcel not here already? The great deity that rules as king in Idu, a package has arrived for you. Is it from Owa? Yes, Your Majesty. You may leave. The almighty person from war. The great effigy from our war. Look at the fool. The fool who has decided to tamper with my peace. Today is your end. Who are you? Who are you to say that to me? Who are you to interfere with what I am doing in my house? Do you want me to handle your second death from here right now? You've not told me about your meeting with the priest. Ah, oh, the priest opened my eyes, and I am ready to wait on the gods to handle this. Hmm. Just a meeting with the priest. It totally changed your psyche. You not talk about the gods? Pardon me, mother. I am just overexcited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what exactly did he say? He said a lot, mother. But well, most importantly, like you rightly advised, I will forget about Eze Ekwokote Ekwono. I will leave him to the gods to handle. Oh, I am so excited. 
Oh, this is good. Wait until you hear the rest. You will be super excited. This meeting was very nice. Yes, I called you. Chiamaka, why would you hire another cook when we have a competent cook in the palace? Oh, that's because Ujumwa is the one I want now. Are you out of your mind? No. Since you stubbornly refused to fire Ijoma, I decided to employ Ujumwa at least to keep an eye on her. Chiamaka, give me one reason you trust this Ujumwa. Oh, simple. She's not Ijoma. She is not Ijoma. Mm -hmm. And what if you end up regretting it after eating her food? Well, we will simply ask her to assist Ijoma. I do not trust this Ijoma of a girl anymore. Not after what she did in the palace, no. To handle what we eat, no. So I decided to employ you, Juma. Listen to me, my dear queen. There should be a limit to sentiments. You don't just wake up and fire a competent cook who has been working here in the palace with us all these years. Just because of an offense she committed under duress. A queen should not be insensitive. And who said I fired Ijoma? I have not. I employed Ujuma, like I said earlier, to keep an eye. Sweetheart, two good heads are better than one. Lousy king of Omoguro. What are you doing here? So you now feel you have what it takes to come into my palace anytime you wish? What do you expect from a man you owe? You owe me and you know it. Even the sons of history attest to the fact that you owe me. Hey, you, you shut up. Shut up, you refraff king of Omoguro people. I owe you nothing. You owe me! You owe me, Okote Kwano. And you must pay back! Listen to me. This is going to be my last courtesy visit to you. The next time we see eye to eye, it must be within the confines of a court of law. Court of law? And who is that fool you are going to engage as a lawyer to represent you in a case involving me? No, who is that fool that will sit in judgment as a judge in a case involving the masquerade of do in a court of law? I tell you something. Stop, you braggart. The charm that will eventually kill the charmer will be different from the one he prepared. The masquerade that everyone fears was also decorated by people close to it. And I put it to you today that you have come face to face with a different brand of masquerade entirely. I am not one of those masquerades that people decorate. You are standing face to face with the the deadly masquerade of Idu. I am that masquerade who decorates himself. And for coming here today to voice this unthinkable thing, standing before me to speak in parables, I am telling you right here, right now, that the sickness that ultimately killed the elephant actually started from this tumor. I am not here for your empty threats. I wish you were toppling their head. Because you are not a good man. One more thing. By the time you eventually decide to sign those documents transferring ownership of Onwiyi to me, Endeavor to write my name in capital letters. Agame Bugutegi. We're gone. This fool. This fool is growing wings. I am going to grind you like a melon. Agame Bugutegi Gusi. Hmm. Smells nice. Oh, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> my favorite test that's good at you. Hope so too. Thank you, my queen. Thank you, Your Highness. You really had to ask her to cook food? Yes, honey. It's her first day. How else are we supposed to be sure that she's fit for the job? Does that mean that IJ is not going to cook again? Oh, I never said so. I just kept to do that to keep an eye on her. Hmm? <laughs> you like it? Sweet. Oh. <laughs> you win. <laughs> I will always win. <laughs> Okay. Uh, try it. Mm, delicious. Uh huh. I told you. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Some water. You're good. No. Oh. Ah. What is going on? Ah. Oh. Ah. What is it? Ah. Your stomach. Ah. Yes. <coughs> oh. My, my stomach. Ah. <coughs> I hope your highness. What did you do? I didn't do anything, my queen. I saw you struggling and I suspected it could be food poisoning. Then I remembered the list my grandmother told me that take care of food poisoning. That's what I gave you and you are well again. I could have you beheaded for lying to me. I am telling you the truth, my queen. I didn't do anything. Oh, shut up that lying mouth of yours! Are you possibly saying that Ujumwa probably poisoned our food? Oh, contaminated our food. Is that what you want me to believe? I have not accused anyone, my queen. I only know that I did not soil my oath. Oh, shut up that stupid lying mouth of yours! What oath are you talking about? Did you forget the same oath when you brought in a criminal to this palace? Come and admit it at once! You are jealous of Ujuma. I didn't do anything, my queen. I didn't do anything. Are you mad? You think I'm joking with you? Really? decision again by saying she's not fired? Chiamaka, when a woman is fortunate enough to become a queen, she must rise above sentiments at all times. You wallow in sentiments and it beats my imagination. And oftentimes I sit to wonder if this is really you or you're just doing this to spite me. Excuse me? Sweetheart, you talk to me harshly because of that thing? There was just an attempt on our lives, but we were fortunate enough to survive it. And the same person who was instrumental to our survival, you accuse? Come on, why not give me time to just work this whole thing out? For the meantime, your new employee, Anijoma, remain here.
Your Majesty. I am a mafia, remember? I have seen it all. <laughs> I do not need a pep talk to deal with someone like the fool you described. I can tell you that I know him now. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I am happy to hear that. And thank you for accepting to carry out this enormous task for me. You're welcome. This is the zenith of sacrifice, and I will forever be indebted to you. Your Majesty. This is payback time. I mean, remember how you saved my life back then in Ireland? And I told myself that even if it will warrant me passing through the eye of a needle just to pay you back, that I will do the needful. I will do everything within my power. I am absolutely grateful. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, that reminds me, you said you have additional brief for me. What is it? Yes. There is a certain box you must locate. That box contains the box of the dreaded masquerades. It might look fetish, ugly, not glamorous, but you mustn't be deterred. That box is the summation of Epokote Kwano. You must go for it. And if you succeed, then we have succeeded in getting him. Your Majesty. Let us hope the deaf and dumb prank works. Eze Ibe Abuche the second. Once I am in, I am in. I mastered this game from the lords of the game. And I can tell you categorically that I will not feel a good man like you. I trust you. Thank you. I know what you can do. Thank you. But I swear by the gods of the land of Omobu that if you succeed in doing this for me, I will make you the chairman of the mining corporation that will spring up in Nanui. <laughs> it's an assurance. Your Majesty, <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> in as much as you owe me nothing, I will not reject this one. I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty. I just had a feeling that this deaf and the dumb woman is up to something. How come she's sleeping? I have this feeling. I have this feeling that this deaf and the dumb woman may have seen what she is not supposed to see. What is it? You haven't seen anything yet. Why was I even bothered? The box is still the same way I left it. And moreover, I carry the key to this room everywhere I go. Why was I so bothered? Ibabushi no keke. I hope you have nothing to do with this. If this is connected to you, Ibabu I am going to kill you. And I am going to kill you. Slowly. Why are you here? 
failing last week. I did everything just right. Oh, spare me the cock and bull story. You miserable daughter of a cow. You did everything right. And the fool is still alive. How is that possible? Give me more time, my king. Eh? I will increase the quantity. Hey, 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 shut up. Daughter of a cow. Do not just increase the quantity. I want you to pour everything. Use everything immediately. Use everything. Using everything, we, we leave a trace when we die. Listen, listen. Do exactly what I have told you. That fool who is forcing me to vomit what I already swallowed does not deserve to leave. Pour everything. Let him die immediately. And those who can trace, they should trace everything to me. I am equal to everything. Idiot. Why will he call me daughter of a cow? Hey! Hey! hey. You are speaking? I called you the daughter of a cow because indeed you are the daughter of a cow. Fail me this once and you are dead. Your Highness, is this not it? <sighs> A deaf and dumb woman will make his bukote one vulnerable. He has been looking for one all these years. And the moment he finds one, he will get married to her. When they send one to him, if she succeeds in settling with him as a wife, she would discover the box. That box. That box that contains the box of the dreaded masquerade. Having achieved that, Onyeze, you have crippled the book of the one. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 You know I used to live in Europe. What has that got to do with anything? and that I was in school over there. Maybe you didn't get me. What has that got to do with anything? Chamaka, will you please calm down and stop shouting? I once told you a story about a lady I met over there. I met her in the hospital. She was sick and dying, in dear need of help. She needed blood transfusion, and I was in a position to help. I did. And she survived the ordeal. We later became friends. And eventually I employed her in my company as a manager. Why are you disturbing my ears with all those tales? Ibabuchi, I caught you red-handed doing God knows what with that girl before a no-good-looking box. What is that supposed to mean? I tell you something, Chemaka. What you referred to as an occult looking box is actually something I have craved for a very long time. And the girl you met is Rebecca. What an insult. 
Oh! Your girlfriend Rebecca finally came back from Ireland. And all you could do is just to bring her to our palace. What for? Chemaka, you are dissipating so much energy and nothing. Really? I want you to calm down and hear me out. There is nothing romantic going on between Rebecca and I. I brought her in to do a job. And as we speak, Bokote Kwano has been crippled. I was so excited, carried away by her achievement. That was the reason for the hog. Explain what you mean by she finally helped you. And what do you mean by Ebokote Kwan is crippled? You need not worry, my dear. It's a long story. Okay? I'll tell you something. Right now, I am in the mood to hold you in my arms. Come on. <laughs> What are you telling me? What are both of you telling me? That my wife walked out of this palace through that gate and none of you saw her. How is that possible? Your Majesty, we were all here. We didn't see her leave. You didn't see her leave? Yes, no, 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 I know. You are now telling me that my wife has become a superwoman as in she developed. Some supernatural powers to the extent of leaving this palace and none of the guards saw her. Your Highness, perhaps she might be in one of the rooms. You know how she likes to explore the palace. You know you just said that if I slap you, you will die here. So why are you provoking me? Are you a fool? My wife is in this house in any of the rooms and I didn't see her. Listen to me both of you. If by nightfall my wife has not returned from wherever she is, everybody, everybody dies. Your Majesty, uh, we we'll look for her. In fact, we are going to look for her now. Yes, Your Majesty. Yes, Your Majesty. <sighs> My king, my queen, I hope you enjoyed your food. I want you to eat it. What? The food? Test it! Uh, Do you want me to feed you? Your, your highness, but... How dare you! When did we become so carefree and lackadaisical that you now challenge us? Are you out of your mind? Mm -mm. Now eat! You highness, now eat! The nations. Test the food. Your hey. Your Highness, so I am sorry. He made me do it. Let me guess. Am I going to take one, all right? I had no choice, Your she... Highness. <laughs> he wanted you dead by all cost. And what makes you think you can murder a king and his wife? Your Highness, so please, temper justice with mercy. Never! That's what they all say. Guts! Guts! Yes, Come here! Now pick this idiot up and hand her over to the police. But make sure you pick her up before you do that. No, my friend, get out! Please! What timidity! Little imp! Oh! Epoko take one of things. He could infiltrate our household and we wouldn't know about it. Well, he has failed once again because I am several steps ahead of him. Why do you keep saying that? You still haven't been able to figure that out? What? He has a death. And dumb woman as a wife. Mm -hmm. That woman is Rebecca. <gasps> Rebecca. She has been missing since yesterday. Uh, Your Majesty, I, I still keep you in high reverence. Uh, but I want to ask, uh, did you have a, a quarrel with her? That later metamorphosed uh, you, throwing a fist on her, and then she now decided to... What kind of business question are you asking? Is it, what is this? No, let us even assume that there was a quarry that later metamorphosed into whatever thing you are trying to describe. Is that enough reason for the woman to leave this house? I, I am sorry. No, 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 you don't, you don't need to tell me that you are sorry. 
Because there are some certain questions a man who sits very close to a king should not even ask in the first place. Your, your Highness, he is deeply sorry. Yes. And, Mana, I want to ask your Highness, with all due respect, have you reported this case to the police? Another dumb question. What is going on? No, at times I, I begin to wonder why must I end up with two dollars as the only two elders that are close to me in castle? What is this? A woman who is married to a man has been missing for 24 hours and you feel the matter has not gone to the police? We are sorry. Well, I, am, I have not called anybody here to tell me whether they are sorry or whether they are not. I called you because you are going to open the data today. Today? Yes, today. That's why I ask you to come prepared. You are going to open the data to go and find out if she is there in her family house. If she is not there, then you inform them that she has gone missing. Uh, Your Majesty, uh, if I may ask, won't our journey to open the data? Cause a very big war between you and the people of Oban because it is some. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, your, 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 your Majesty, you see the people of Oban they might think you have a hand in the appearance or disappearance of their daughter, and they will start accusing you. Is here what will let that be my headache? They know me. If I had any hand in whatever thing that may have happened to their daughter, I will own up to it because I know nothing will happen. They knew me in open data. I am that deity king who is the overseer of the box of the dreaded masculines of the land of the supernatural. Nobody challenges me. You are very aware of that. Hey, this place looks deserted. Yes, it huh? does. Look at the, 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 the environment. Quite unkept. Even the grass yeah. is not cut. As if uh, they have not swept it for a long time. They have not even cut this it. grass for a long <laughs> time. See, huh? somebody's coming. Hey, excuse me. Uh, yeah? Son, our son, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Greetings, my elders. Uh, we uh, greet you. We greet you. Uh, uh, are you from this uh, kingdom? Yes. Yes, my elders, I'm from this kingdom. Uh, hey. Thanks. We thank the gods. We thank the gods. <laughs> uh, please, we are looking for the occupants of this compound. This compound. Uh, we want to see them. It's mm. very urgent. My elders, I'm surprised with this request. Uh, why are you surprised? Is it not? Uh, is this compound not Mazu Onwebu's compound? Mazu Onwebu's compound. Yes. Mm. No. Oh, why? He has only daughter uh, named Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, yes, Rebecca. Rebecca. Mm. Yes. My elders. As you can see, this gate is locked, and the occupants of this compound died a long time ago. Chalu, uh -uh. they have a child, Rebecca. I and him, we came here, two of us, we came here to marry a daughter here, the king of Idu. He can't tell me they are all dead. Why? How the guy can they die? Mubano, we were here. Omwebu's uh -huh. family. Omwebu's mm. family. My others. If there should be any marriage conducted in this compound, uh, I should be aware of it because I am also Ongo Su's family. Yeah. This Ongwebu you are talking about is not from this compound. Huh? I'm sure that you are in the wrong place. Uh, 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 son, uh, are you sure you, you are talking about the main occupants of this, of this place? <laughs> My elders, even the Rebecca you mentioned. I have not heard of that name because the only child the owners of this compound had traveled long time ago. That should be since 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And since then, no one has ever heard or seen him. Uh -huh. Yes. But her father was in this house when we came. And the two uncles, they, 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 were, they were with us. My elders, my uncle and his wife died when I was a child. And even the Rebecca you mentioned, I don't know the name. This compound you are seeing, I and my brothers, we clean up this compound once in a while. 
So I'm sure that you're in the long, wrong place. It is well. It is I, I'm well. sure we came here. The marriage right was conducted in this compound. I, I am sure. I am sure. My orders. Huh? I'm in the wrong place. Can I take my leave now? Thank you. Huh? Who were the men that gave Rebecca to us? Huh? Is she a cafe? Your Majesty. Is she a walkway? Your Highness. You know the staff. It can kill liars on the spot. And I want both of you to swear on it. Swear on this staff that you went to Obwendida as instructed. And that what you have just told me is the truth and nothing but the truth. Your Majesty. I swear with the purity of my heart. We are telling you the truth. Uwakwe and I went to Obwendida as instructed. And we confirmed that the woman Rebecca was never from there. What? No, you are possibly telling me that all the forces obedient to me went blind and I married a ghost? No, 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 no. We have not called her a ghost. What we are saying is uh, she might be on a mission. And what mission are you talking about? Your uh, Majesty, uh, you need to calm down uh, on, uh, at this point. Eh? Because we need to brood uh, together and find out where things went wrong. Yes. Eh? Of course, we need to ask questions. Who told you about that woman, Rebecca, in the first place? Eh? Could it be that something happened in between and we didn't know it uh, before we could say a word? She became our queen or what? These are the questions we need to ask and... Uh, you know, you know, both of you, leave me alone. Uh, Let it not be what I am thinking. Rebecca, let it not be what I am thinking. Because I am going to find you no matter where you are hiding. And I am going to kill you. Slowly. Hey, hey. Who are you and what are you doing here? Deaf and dumb? You know, you know, is this a kind of joke or what? <laughs> hey, 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 get out. Listen, listen. Hey, get out. Hey, hey, hey. Go back to SZ Babushi. That fool, that lousy son of Okoya. Go back to him and tell him that you came rather too late. <laughs> get out! You are the first visitor coming before my throne this morning, and you're not willing to sit? Ibabushi, do you really think you are wise? I know what I know, and I do what is right. It is now left for people who watch me to decide if I am wise or unwise. I don't know how you came to find out of my need for a deaf and a dumb wife. But I want you to understand something. That the deaf and the dumb woman you sent to my palace towards the end of business yesterday came rather too late. I already have a deaf and a dumb wife. Really? <laughs> That's interesting. And this wife of yours, where is she at the moment? Excuse me? I mean this deaf and dumb wife that you speak of, where is she? In my palace, of course. Oh, I well, see. Of course, she's in my palace. Where is, where are you thinking she will be? Are you sure? What do you mean by am I sure? Listen, Ibabushi, I don't know the game you are playing, but I came to warn you. I came to warn you to be very careful and stop trying. Stop provoking me. Stop making efforts to have Onuyel on the back. You cannot 
Only it belongs to me and it will remain my property until the end of time. Your Highness. I am ready to go. What? Hello, Your Highness. How are you? You can talk? Of course I can talk. I can articulate properly. I am an international MC. An international MC? Hey, you mean you are not deaf? <laughs> Your Highness, people fear you. But it's just a misconception. You are nothing. You are not as powerful as you. You claim. Remember, I have seen you inside out. And, and, and you feel, you lousy woman, you actually feel you can see my manhood and still live? You, you said! Who do you think you are? You should be thinking of paying reparations for the number of times you slept with her. Both of you. I will come back for both of you. And I am going to have my own pound of flesh. Come for you and my own time. What can he do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The scoundrel failed to understand that a dreaded masquerade does not dance in the arena for long. Mm. He's such a fool. Your wife is dropping me at the airport, so I'm ready to leave. Leave? Yeah. And who told you I'm willing to let you go? You are a guest of the king. And my wife has come to terms with your presence. You're not going anywhere. Highness, really? Come, come, come here. I like what we did to you. <laughs> your Highness, Eze Ibuabuchi the second. I no. greet you. <laughs> Who's going to find her? That deaf and dumb woman who came here towards the close of business yesterday. She was wearing red. Find her and bring her back to me because she is the real deal. Your Majesty, the woman in question did not leave any address. I don't know what to start. Hey, you shut up there. Start from somewhere, you son of a cow. Yes, Your Majesty. Why didn't I see this coming? How come I had no feeling at all? <laughs> the decorated boss of the dreaded masquerade of the land of the supernatural. What happened to you? <laughs> Your Highness, you have never been this excited in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Can we know what achievement we've recorded as a people? <laughs> we have achieved something very significant. As we speak, Ebokote Kwano has been crippled. <laughs> and Onoyi land is now back to its original owners. <laughs> uh, you, your Highness, how did you do that? I discovered exactly where to hit him. And I hit him there. <laughs> your Highness, with due respect, you are speaking in parables. Mm -hmm. Make us understand. Why the area? He was the first visitor that came here this morning. Huh? Yeah. You know what? Your Highness. Guinea. Are you serious? That if woman was here? I can't deceive you others in council. You see that so-called deity of his that everyone was afraid of? I now have it in my possession. What? He wants to bring it to the Your Highness. Are you sure of what you are saying? 
Do you know the implications of having such a thing in your own house? What are you talking about, Ichi? What implication? You are talking as if I have a nuclear weapon in my house. But <laughs> listen, you need not worry. I want all of you to prepare. Eh? Get ready. Because very soon we will roll out the drums. Yeah. We will celebrate a no more balloon. But something good has happened. God <laughs> I think he has lost his mind. I believe he's high on something. You are right if you say so. Maybe the fight with Eze Pokota Ekwon has driven him to any of these banned substances. Like you rightly said. Elders. Elders. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Wait. Our king is perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that our king would have not said what he said if he has not achieved victory in the spirit. In fact, our king deserves our support so that we can together reclaim our land. That land of Mungani. Mm -hmm. oh, yes! I thought you had something reasonable to say. I'm telling you. Yeah, I can't blame me, um, When you have helped the king mm. reclaim that land and now belongs to the evil king, you can call us for celebration. Oh, no. Yeah. It is really nothing. It's something. And I love it. Thank you. Ichioma, ever since I employed you in this palace to look for me, you've been an amazing person. A wonderful girl you are. It's quite unfortunate I wasn't able to see all these qualities in you. And I'm sorry. Oh, my queen. I still have you to thank for my continued presence in this palace. If you really wanted me gone, I since would have been gone. Thank you. It's all right. You are not just a good cook, but you also have lots of wisdom to deliver each day. And I'm proud of you. I will personally ensure you get married to a noble man that will treat you like a queen. Oh, thank you, my queen. God bless you. Come on. Bless you too. Come on. Please. Thank you. <laughs> oh yes! Oh oh! Oh gili! Aya kwa kala ringro. Asmi je jo ba ma je yo nu. O kwa ru oge yo da. I come run zan ha mo ni kenge ru na ha jo beta na me ke me jo bra kwe. I saw Jack when you catch it on a jan hard in. Hey, oh, Gamma Gay, you can get your man, I hate you. Get from Gamma, go get your man, I'm a hag. As me, young Ronald, you can grow now, so young Ronald, so can grow now. Everyone, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. No. <clears throat> the decorated box of dreaded masquerades of the land of supernatural. You have found it. If you get I what to what no fire can as well. 
There was something you told me, and you were very specific. You told me that if I can get hold of this box, which you told me is a summation of Ebogote Kwano's powers, that I have crippled it. Am I correct? You are very correct. <laughs> Magana, this box is the summary of what makes Eze Bukotepon refer to himself as the deity king. Now, watch. As the days go by, you will come to understand the power of what you have done. Hey! Mm -mm. <laughs> hey! Hmm. All I can get from what you have been saying is that somebody took something from you. But you have not managed to tell me what he took, Kabiesi. So I want to ask you, what did he take? Jagbo, what did he take? The very blood that runs in my veins. He took the box. He decorated parts of the dreaded masquerade of the man of the supernatural. Otio! Kabiet! Otio! A mass armor! Huh? That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you. Abisi. No one is supposed to know that the box exists. Yeah, but he found it. And he took it. Ah. Hey, Ori Yamio. Eh? Akiri Dio sa Kabisi. Adekiri Dio ki. Omogele gele gonje ki mori dire. We do not see the bottom of the ocean. Kabi, see, we do not see the bottom of the lagoon. Even a well bred woman will never allow any other person to see her put out. How did this one happen? How did he get into your room, your sacred room, for him to see this decorated box of the dreaded masquerade? Uh, listen, the struggle of a war. There was a she. How do you mean there was a she? The supposed deaf and dumb woman that I married. She is the one who has brought me on my knees. Please, ah, if you were not the king, I would have said that you are careless. So How? But then we... How? Even the padlock does not allow other padlocks to see the inside working of his, his machine. That's why you have different keys for the padlock. But I want to know, how is this one connected to your enemy? Hey, hey, listen. Ibabushi, uh -huh. that enemy of my soul, set me up with an actor, with an international model, an MC. That woman I married as deaf and dumb is not deaf and dumb. Ah! Kabiesi. Kabiesi. This one is on you. <laughs> I have not brought you all the way from a war. I am spending a whole lot of money to bring you here. You are not here to apportion blames. I am looking for solutions. Huh? Can be a solution? But it's a very solution. Solution, this one is on you. You know what comes with the fact that uh, a third eye has seen that bo decorated box? Eh? Can you see this one? I cannot do anything, no. Oh, the re -re. No, re -re me. No. I am going to. No, eh? no, no, you come down. You come down. There must be something that we can do. We come down. Please sit down. Sit down. Come, please. Come on. What must I do? Ah! 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 Ah!
Kabesi, a mini What was that? Kabesi. I don't know what it is, but there is something, something right in this very portion of this seat where I have always been sitting. By the lifting of this very staff, I want whatever it is to be neutralized immediately. Mm -hmm. Mara de Simongo. Kabisi, this is not ordinary. Oh. Ah, the man is ordinary. The doom that comes with the thought I seen, that decorated box of the dreaded masquerade, it is the one that you are experiencing now. Kabisi, that woman that you married has ruined you. Eh? Your enemy has won, no? Eh? Kabisi, <laughs> Kabisi, Mila, Mobode, Mila, Mobode, Gagamutilone. I am ready, Kabisi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Barry, when you are confident of your position in a matter, you can swear by anything. Because the greatest duty one can do to oneself is self-preservation. Eh, so, on the sanctity of this staff that Ogun gave to me, I swear that I never asked him oh, to kill anyone. Whatever it is that has risen against him, you deal with him alone, oh, no. And leave me out of it. <laughs> I am saying this so because my hand is not there. Already, <clears throat> I cannot sit where I have sat all my life. And I cannot touch the staff of the kings of Edu. What is going on? You are supposed to be dead. Are you not? I did nothing to warrant the punishment you gave me. You killed me for nothing. Do you think you deserve to live? I can feel the weight of your anger. And I know you've come to kill me. Please, let me talk with him. He, Gemma, my beautiful wife. I can't believe you have come to save me. You know I have really missed you. After you killed me. Rest in peace, son. Live the fight for me. Like I told every other ghost out there, hunting for him. <laughs> he has a lot of debt to pay. And I'm here to make sure he does just that. After which, I will bring him to you on a platter of gold. I implore you. Please go back and continue your rest. He was my husband. And he killed me. Let me handle him. What just happened here now? I have spent the better part of the day warding off every other person that you've killed that are coming for you. Whose vengeful spirits are after you? Your cup is full. 
and every other person have risen from your graves. What price do you think you can pay? Hey, hey, hey. Be very, very careful. I am still the king of Idu. I am still that deadly masquerade of Idu who decorates himself. I can kill at the slightest provocation. So you have to be very careful what you say before me, before I handle your second death right here, right now. If you believe you are the king, lift the staff of kings and sit on the throne. Wait, wait a minute, Ijama. Are you confirming to me that you are the brain behind this? You no, know, are you the one doing all this? You had a chance of having me as yours, but you killed me to suppress the truth that you are a demon, never qualified to rule any people. I will come back when I must come back. And if I come back and still find you perpetuating yourself as king of it, I will kill you myself. And I will not leave your corpse to experience a decent way. What is the meaning of this, Ijem? Ijem, you are caught red handed in my secret room. What are you doing here? And how did you gain access into this place? My great husband, I'm only concerned about you tomorrow. Charms will fail you someday, and you will remember that Kadike, the priest of Idu, ministers of an ancient that is more powerful and sacred than all the powers your cause. You are concerned about my tomorrow. And that is the reason you gained access into my secret room. Ijama, for coming here. For coming here into this secret room that houses the decorated boss of the dreaded masquerades of the land of the supernatural. You will not leave to tell the story. No! Do not kill me today. For you will regret it to me. I am the gift from the gods to you. I am the one that will lead you to the powerful arena where you will command power. Be a man of power. Ijama, I am not going to kill you today. For you are dead already. When you meet the devil, tell him that he was the one who kissed you. He will you. We shall run. No, no, please. I killed her that night because she knew too much. Why does it appear as if indeed she was right? I humble myself before the great deity that rules as human. May you live forever. This here is the staff of the kings of Edil. I want you to lift it and place it back in its original position. Huh? My hey king, that's the staff of the kings of Yudu. I'm not permitted to touch it. My presence permits you. I am the king of Yudu and this is the staff of the kings of Yudu. And I said, lift it up and place it back in its original position right now.
Your Majesty, I've been looking for the woman since yesterday, and she's nowhere to be found. Forget the woman. The woman is overtaken by events. I want you to go to the house of Obuefi Ukadike, the priest of Idio. Tell him that I said he should see me here immediately. As it pleases you, Your Majesty. Why are you insulting yourself? You will not allow me, the king of Idu, to touch you. But you will allow a slave to do just that. Why? What's your problem? Why are you provoking me? Do you want me to set you ablaze? Stop this nonsense. I am the king of Idu. And I have the right to touch the staff of the kings of Idu. That abomination who calls himself Ebokoto Ekwonu was never a king. He acquired power and intimidated the men in council and they crowned him. Go back to him. Tell him that he cannot summon a man like me. Uh, the great priest of Yudu, please, please, have mercy on me. I cannot tell the king what you just said. He will kill me. You never can tell the number of times he has tried to kill you and failed. He cannot kill you because you have a role to play in the imagine he do. He cannot. Uh, I do not understand what you mean. What are you trying to say? Go back to him. Tell him that the woman once educated him on the difference between power and intimidation. Let him go back to that woman's family and explain what happened to her. Only then can he come to me and I will speak to him. Your Majesty, maybe you'll be the one to make him change his mind. I mean, I'm done with the job I was hired to do. It's time to go back to Ireland. Oh, Rebecca. My husband told me you are the one who will run the mine that will be established in Onui. Oh, Your Majesty. My queen is absolutely correct. I tell you something, Rebecca. That company is going to be a major conglomerate and a force to reckon with in the mining industry. We're just waiting for the final victory. And I don't want you to leave. <laughs> Your Majesty. That man, I, I know he's walking around the clock to kill me, to do anything to really hurt me. I think I should travel to Ireland and when everything is calm, I come back. I mean, that's okay. Come on. You need not worry, my dear Rebecca. Huh? You are dealing with Ezei Babuti. The Ofuaka Lotamano Zwara of Omobolo. You need not be afraid, okay? I have been making wide consultations. And I assure you that Eze Bukote Kwonu must vomit what he swallowed. Hmm. It's just a matter of time. Victory is certain. I don't want you to go so that you can witness what is coming. Okay? <laughs> yes, Rebecca. Do not leave. I can't forget the sacrifice you made for this family. Mm -mm. I will forever be grateful to you. Mm -mm. Your Majesty, no. Yes. You may not understand what your husband did for me. He saved my life. 
Thank you so much, Your Majesty. Come on, you did not mention that. <laughs> it's okay. I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty, why are we not on your seat? Uzondu, a time will always come in the life of a man when he will discover that there are certain things that are superior to reserved seats. That may be the point I am in now. Where is the man I asked you to go and bring? Your Majesty, he was very emphatic and bold. He said a man like you is not qualified to summon him. I'm yet to recover from the shock. Ubu, if you can say that to you? Yes, Your Majesty. He said that a certain woman once educated you on the difference between power and intimidation. He said you must first go to the woman's family and explain what happened to her. Then, when you must have done that, you can now come to him. You will regret it tomorrow. I am the gift from the gods to you. I am the one that will lead you to that powerful arena where you will command power. Be a man of power, not a man of intimidation. Power and intimidation. Could he be the one? Your Majesty, do you know her? You know what? I I want to be left alone. Just go. Find something to do. I will send for you when I need you. But in the meantime, call me the head of the maidens. Your Majesty, I'm the only one here. They are all gone. I didn't hear you say that. What did you say? That is what happened, Your Majesty. They called me and said that the late queen appeared and asked them to run out of the palace or she will kill them. So I'm the only one here. If I leave now, you'll be the only one here. Hey, Bufute, Kwonu. I gave a specific instruction, and I know that noble guard delivered it as given. Why didn't you do what I asked you to do? Obufi, uh, uh, I decided to come and see you myself because I. I know you can solve my problem. We are supposed to be working together and you should be able to cover up for your king. Yeah? If I should go to Ijemma's family and open up on what happened to Ijemma, you know it yourself that I am going to lose the throne. But there was never a time you had the throne. What? Yes. You've always been a pretender and the gods purposely allowed it so you can fool yourself to the extreme because they wanted the next king to come of age. He will be crowned, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hey. Wait, 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 I want to understand this thing. You are, you are telling me that you are planning to crown another king in Edo. We are, I am king already. Who is the person? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Someone chosen by the gods. Someone who will lead in the cleansing that is coming to Edo. Someone who will not take things that do not belong to him. Someone who has the fear of Chukwu Kika Biyama. He will be crowned eventually. But he will still remain relevant in the imaginary do. What kind of useless relevance are you trying to place me in? I am already a king. I don't understand what you are talking about. Listen, we can solve this problem. I apologize that I have... I have undermined you all these years that I reigned as king. I, I want us to start making amends. Because you are the chief priest and I am the king. We should be working together so that if there is anything that comes out, then we will be able to share it. And I care about nobody. To solve this problem, for you to understand that I want us to be on the same page from now going forward, you are going to give me your account, your bank account details. And today, I am going to wire five million naira to you. Okay, be there, ba. Haje wuna today. Haje wuna today. 
What I go made it ungrade, Tano Biedena. What I go made it ungrade, Tano Biedena. Good money, not a day. A bote quono. A bote quono. You may as well offer me your blood in a basin. It won't move me. It won't. The gods have finally risen up against you, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Go to the family of Ijemma. Explain to them what happened to their daughter. If they decide to forgive you, if you want to compensate or console them with your money, it's not my business. For me, I don't need that money. I don't need your money. Not now, not ever. Five million naira. Yes. What? How dare you? How dare you lift the staff of the kings of Idu from his original original place? You sort of a cow. Who asked you to bring it here? Your Majesty, you asked me to lift it earlier in the day. And so what? So when you left, the late queen appeared to me and asked me to take it to the chief priest. Never. She is talking nonsense. You see why she died? You see, have you seen why she died? Even when she died, she's still causing confusion. This is the staff of the kings of Idu. Property of the kings. It has nothing to do with this man here. This man here is the priest. He has no business whatsoever with this staff. Now I order you to take it back to the palace now before I kill you here. Move! Move. A man whose chi has deserted, a man who has lost the protection of his chi, cannot order around that man whose chi is following. And what do you mean by that? Ubefu Kadike. Take it. I want to take it. When men dare the gods, they die like chickens. I'm not supposed to be happy that a fellow man like me is dead. But in this case, I am super happy. You know why? I got back my land. <laughs> Isn't that what I told you? Uh -huh. That God will never forsake his At own. all, at all. Ah, and mother. you answered his own time. How do I look? There is someone chosen by the gods. Someone who will lead the cleansing that is coming to do. Someone who will not take things that do not belong to him. Someone who has the fear of Chuko Kika Biyama. That person is the one we have come to crown king here today. 
And that person is you. By the power vested in me as the chief priest of Idu, I hereby cry you, Ikenna, son of Okeko Dikpo, Eze Chukutubelugo of Idu. I am a very happy man, and as a matter of fact, my joy knows no bounds. The man who killed my father has finally kissed the dust, and that which he criminally took from us has been retrieved. Today we make a toast, a toast to victory and to resilience. And we use this to send a message across to the people that evil can never triumph over good. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You are indeed a different species of king. Your Highness, Odogo Kemo. Nalonya. Nalonya Makana. Oh, give you a fuck, Kalotalomanus Lord, and you know, no. Odogo Kemo. Of course. And for ensuring this victory, for challenging and winning that evil man that nearly crippled Omobolo and making us part of his kingdom, we hereby renew our hope in your ability to rule us. Chiban, you know you with a You will remain our king. Yes, sir. Because we are convinced beyond all reasonable doubt yes. that you are going to take us to greater glories. Yes. 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 Yes.